A very good morning to you once again. It's day seven of the Invictus Games from Dusseldorf in Germany, and day seven means it's the final day. It's hard to believe we've got here so quickly. And on this last day, well, we've got archery, and then it's the closing ceremony, headlined by Rita Ora. And it promises to be a fantastic celebration of what has been an amazing seven or eight days. It really has been fabulous, hasn't it? Well, let's uh, get things underway today. And before we get to the action, let's catch up with the highlights from yesterday. The Invictus Games 2023 in Dusseldorf are racing towards the final days of action here at the Mirkur Spiel Arena. Sitting volleyball takes centre stage with action from the quarterfinals and semi-finals. Cycling takes to the roads of Dusseldorf with highlights from today's action and with some of the drama from the table tennis finals. In table tennis singles, the TT2 category final was between Germany's Jorge Hinrichs and the Republic of Korea's Choi Il-sang. The two had met in the group stages with Choi coming out on top. TT2 is a seated category for competitors with impaired trunk or balance functionality. Hinrichs attempted to raise his game to defeat Choi whose country are one of the powerhouses of the global game. But the Korean was simply too good and took victory in straight games. The TT7 category is for competitors with psychological impairments and less severe physical impairments. In the women's singles, it brought Israel's Moor Mizra and Australia's Verity Sanchez together. Sanchez has osteoarthritis in her knees and inflammation in her shoulders after she was injured in the Australian Army. She was full of agile movement, though, around the court and won the first game 11-4. In the second, Misra came back impressively to take it 11-7 and force a decider. The final game was a similar story. 10-7 to Misra and it was match point. With overall victory secured soon after. Another table tennis gold for Israel and with a further chance of glory, because Manash Zorik was in action in the men's singles final, again in the TT7 category. Zorik had already won gold in doubles, beating Christian Munster and his partner along the way. And he had the upper hand on the German again, dominating rallies from well behind the table. Sit back and enjoy this point. A beautiful rally between the pair, 
won by Zorik. He went on to win for a personal second goal in table tennis at these games. In the men's singles TT5 category final, Juan Geraldo of Colombia faced Richard Potter of Team UK. The first game showed what a devastating forehand flick the Colombian possessed, but Potter managed to keep that in check to take the first game. Geraldo came back to win the second 11-6. And in the decider, it was Geraldo who kept his composure and completed his comeback to win two games to one. A fantastic turnaround from the Colombian. Volleyball is the spot we actually picked up 10 months ago. We started from scratch as novice, and today it's the spot we love passionately. So we put on our best, all our heart, and we're doing very, very well now. We had some programs we are running, but Invictus coming into this took it a step more. The what Invictus has started, it's not just for Nigeria, but it's for Africa. And you can see the spirit of the boys today from the match we just played. You see that they are in high spirit. Just want to make our country proud, make our nations proud, and actually be in the Invictus community. The spirit of Invictus is in them now. You can see that they are exhibiting that Invictusness. You know, they believe that everybody is a winner. You can see the love, and that's what Invictus is. Respect. The quarterfinals of sitting volleyball saw the United Kingdom face the United States of America, bronze medalist at the Invictus Games in The Hague last year. As in standing volleyball, teams are allowed three passes to form an attacking play before returning the ball to their opponents. <laughs> Rallies in this exciting sport are often spectacular. Tight first set was eventually won by Team UK by 21 points to 19. In the second set, things were just as close. And on match point to Team UK, this happened. One of the great points in sitting volleyball at these Invictus Games, or indeed any other. Poland and Germany faced off in the next quarter-final. Poland, the defending champions from The Hague, but the Germans, as the hosts, had the backing of the crowd. Poland in red, Germany black. Poland's blockers doing a great job of shutting down a German attack. And the Poles went on to take the first set in convincing style, 
21-12. In between sets, there was enough time for some happy birthday shout-outs, including one for Prince Harry. He was no doubt much happier once the focus was back on the action, which Poland were dominating. Their accuracy and coverage was just that little bit better than the Germans. Note their quick reactions in this point to keep the rally alive after a good block from Germany. Those sorts of qualities soon handed them victory. A straight sets win for Poland, whose title defence is gathering momentum. My name is Erica Moore. I'm participating in the Invictus Games. I'm, I will be doing rowing, swimming, and seated volleyball. My injury, I had major surgery um, out there uh, for cancer. When I heard the news that I was part of the Games, I jumped up and down in my living room. I couldn't believe that they had selected me. I was so happy. and. Immediately I called my aunt and we were cheering together and we were crying and laughing together and this opportunity is, is, is the most amazing thing in my life. Invictus Games are so very special because it comes from the heart. Our team has worked together very hard. We train together, we laugh together, we celebrate together, and sometimes we even cry together. It was an extremely difficult period of time in my life when I learned about the cancer. It, uh, it took um, a lot of perseverance and a lot of strength and family. Family was the most important thing that helped me get through. And I am so proud and so happy and so delighted to be able to sit here in front of you and be a part of this uh, interview. And I never believed in my life that I would be here. And now that I am, I'm, I, ha I, I, I have something to show everybody and the whole world. I have my aunt and uncle and my cousins. I have two cute little nieces who will be watching and who will be cheering and who are in my heart every single day. And I walk proudly and I love to serve my country and I walk proudly every day knowing that there are people who believe in me and I can show that I can be a part of the team and, and I would like to uh, do a, I would like to do the best that I, I can. My mother and my father live in my heart so strong and their strength, um, they helped me through all of my life and I, I am only proud to say that I am their daughter and I love my family very, very much. The message is to love life, to take it day by day. The message is to bring your family closer talk about it. The message is to make friends, to come together as a team, to be as one nation, and to support each other. And that way, we'll all be stronger together. Canada!
Cycling at the Invictus Games is taking place over a 12 kilometer street circuit around Dusseldorf. The hot weather from earlier in the week had faded away and conditions were perfect for road racing. The ARB2 category was the first criterion race of the day. This category is for cyclists with impairments to one of two limbs who may also have a balance impairment. With Flanders not being far away from Dusseldorf, it was unsurprising to see five of the 11 cyclists on the start line flying Belgium colours, while the rest of the field included two Americans, two Colombians and a Romanian. The course was playing into the hands of cyclists from the Low Countries, and three Belgians were well positioned in the leading group of five. While the Belgians were controlling the pace on the road, the fans were getting ready to celebrate the winners of the time trials from earlier in the day. Specifically, the IRB3 Open Race, which was won by James Rogers, captain of the United Kingdom team. Back on the road, it was no change, at least not at the front of the race. I think what will be clear is our front five those speedsters who are timing bots behind the scene have calculated the 20 plus, plus, 20 plus one prediction and there will be seven laps. This is lap number two being completed right now by our leading five. The next medals were given to winners in the IRB3 Masters category, a race for older riders. Team UK's David Jarvis won this race, with Denmark's Kasper Holm and Kenneth Hiltoft claiming silver and bronze, with Hiltoft receiving a hug from Harry himself. And another person wanted to join the podium, Jarvis's daughter, Sophia. In the meantime, moves had been made on the road with Belgium's Peter Kauberg powering off the front for the race's decisive move. Three, oh, is this Peter Kauberg? He's got another lap down. He's absolutely flying, our leader. Colombia's Maurizio Pena was in second and Belgium's Thierry Dutry was third. But no one could catch Kauberg, who could afford to soak up the experience. An incredible performance, and he won't stop now either. We'll push all the way to the line. Peter Calvert, your Victor's Games champion, crosses the line. What a victory! What a start to our criteria races! I'm Jules uh, Grunewald. I'm uh, from the Dutch national team. My injury is a uh, shot wound in my uh, right arm. And uh, I'm uh, playing sitting volleyball. And uh, I'm 26 years old. I heard from the Invictus Games uh, the first time in the uh, uh, revalidation uh, center when I was uh, recovering from my wounding. And uh, they advised me to uh, go look uh, at a training. And that was for me uh, the first moment when I uh, get uh, in contact with, uh, with the Invictus Games. I think the concept of the Invictus Games are really good. Uh, you come together with uh, a lot of people who are in, uh, uh, with different wounded, but uh, with all the same goal, and that is recovery. When you spoke to someone, uh, everyone is saying, uh, we, we do this together. I had a shot wound in uh, Afghanistan. 16 January 2021 and uh, at that time I had uh, my hand uh, was still on it but because of the damage in the arm uh, we decided a year ago to amputate it and um, yeah uh, that, that was really hard and uh, yeah then you heard you have PTSD and uh, yeah with that you have to learn uh, living and uh, no that's that's hard to hear and uh, all your comrades uh, in the army uh, going farther, they get a new rank or they go to uh, uh, missions. And for your own feeling, you stay, uh, uh, yeah, you're still standing still. You're not going forward, but that's not, not happening because you make really big steps. But at some moments, you don't see that anymore. Um, at that moment, uh, it's like everything is standing still. 
and you're thinking, uh, will I survive? Uh, how I will come out of this? And uh, yeah, you are like in, in a roller coaster. You're laying down there on a bed in a field hospital, and uh, yeah, the only thing where you think is, uh, what happened to me? How is it possible? And uh, yeah, it, it was really difficult to uh, yeah to get out of it. And then the first time you go back in the Netherlands, uh, you saw your friends uh, of your family, and yeah, I think that was the hardest part when you see them uh, suffer about because of you and uh, yeah there are still moments that I think yeah, uh, yeah I'm not only wounded but around me too and uh, yeah that was, it was really hard. This is the date that I have been uh, wounded 16, 16 January uh, 2021. Uh, I have uh, tattooed the, the map of Afghanistan on it it's like uh, you can see it here uh, this is the compass, so uh, yeah, it's like for me, it's showing me the way in difficult times. And uh, I uh, have to put this text on it, it means uh, uh, wounded but not defeated. And that is why yeah, Invictus uh, means the same. That is what, what I want to bring out to the younger veterans, that it is too for them, not only for the older. And uh, yeah, I wanted to, to show them that you can do a lot more than you think. And uh, I hope uh, after the games that I have uh, inspired one or two people, that's, that's for me winning. The first semi-final in sitting volleyball saw one of the new nations at these Invictus Games, Colombia, face the country that held the first Invictus Games in 2014. Indeed, their opponents, the United Kingdom, hosted the first international event for adaptive sports in the form of the Stoke Mandeville Games in the 1940s. Wearing blue, Colombia's unorthodox style of play, which often includes returning the ball without utilising the three passes available to them, was catching the UK off guard. And they won the first set, 21 points to 16. Team UK needed a rethink. Yet Colombia pressed ahead. Their movement across the court allowing them to field even the best of the UK's attempts. At 20 points to six, the win was inevitable. <laughs> Team UK had beaten the USA in the last round, but against South American opposition, they had met their match. In the second semi-final, Poland met Georgia. Poles, the defending champions, were in red, while Georgia, who beat the likes of Australia and France to reach the semi-finals, were in white. In a terrific atmosphere at the Spiel Arena, Poland won the first set 21-14. the net. 
In a terrific atmosphere at the Mirkospiel Arena, Poland won the first set 21-14. And although Georgia gave the second set everything they had, there would be no stopping Poland from reaching the final and facing Colombia for the gold medal. And finally, Korea's Eun Ju Lee had a very special games. later on. First of all, let's focus on getting underway with these first bits of action in the archery portion of the Invictus Park on a beautiful, bright, sunny day. It's just coming up to, or in fact, just gone beyond 4.30 local time in Dusseldorf. So it won't hopefully be too long before we get the action started. And it will be worth waiting for based on what we've seen so far today of the archery. Some very good matches.
Thank you very much for your patience as we wait to get underway with the archery gold medal matches at the Invictus Games in Dusseldorf. We are told that the Novice Recurve women's gold medal match is coming up pretty soon. Should just be a matter of minutes now. How many of them? I'm not sure, but <laughs> not too many. And it will be really worth waiting for, so don't go too far away because we're going to get these gold medal matches started soon on this beautiful day at the Invictus Park in Dusseldorf, Germany. And so it is time to get underway in this women's novice recurve gold medal match at the Invictus Games. The first archery gold medals to be decided here in Dusseldorf. A hugely popular competition, so many competitors have entered. And now we are moments away from getting the final start here. We've got six finals to bring you over the next little while. I hope you're looking forward to all of them. If you're new to watching archery competitions, then I'll talk you through it all as we go and uh, explain to you how things are scored. Slightly different format for recurve and for compound. Marie Cecile Boeuf out there alongside Yulia Shevchuk. They've got a lot in common, these two uh, great archers, both having a background in the sciences. Marie Cecile Boeuf served uh, as a senior physician in the French army. And Yulia Shevchuk enlisted in the medical service. So they both followed a similar path and they followed the same path right the way through to the gold medal match in this women's novice recurve competition. Two people who have served their country in a healing capacity, in a scientific capacity. And now they're going to serve up some great entertainment in this, the first final at the archery shooting range at the Invictus Park in Dusseldorf. Hope you're looking forward to all of the action. My name is Ollie Hoffman and I'll be talking you through all of these gold medal matches. Just waiting for clarification 
on a few bits and pieces before we get underway. Last opportunity for the competitors to be alone with their thoughts. So many of them have said that archery is one of the most joyous parts of their sporting lives. There is a, a focus, a peacefulness, a sense of calm when they are with bow in hand getting ready to aim at the target. This time then, the first final in archery at the 2023 Invictus Games. What a pleasure it's going to be to watch this match between Marie Cecile of France and Yulia Shevchuk of Ukraine. crowd gathered to watch this they're undercover good thing too because it's a warm day and there is Yulia Shevchuk who enlisted in the medical service when she was uh, training as a scientist and she'll be taking on Marie Cecile Boeuf of the French Army Health Service the Corps of Army Physicians a senior doctor The format is set play for recurve. So you get two points for winning the set, one point for a tie. Six set points wins the match. It's a maximum of five sets. If necessary, we go to a single arrow shoot off. And three arrows comprise each set. We begin. It is Yulia Shevchuk on the left, Marie Cecile Boeuf on the right. Shevchuk will shoot first. That's a strong beginning. An eight from Shevchuk, a six from Boeuf. Another eight. So looking very tidy here, Yulia Shevchuk. Needs this to be a much higher score to take it down really to the last arrow and that is good so an eight from birth two-point margin if Shevchuk can produce a nine here then she's got this first set in the bag Consistent work from Shevchuk, so she's guaranteed to at least pick up a point in order to tie. Marie Cecile Leboeuf must get a 10. Oh, well, she wasn't a million miles away. It's an eight, so that will be two set points to Yulia Shevchuk. Just to remind you, six points wins the match. So the first set going the way of the member of the Ukrainian Army Medical Service. She's spoken so Eight. wonderfully, Eight. articulately, Shevchuk, about the atmosphere here. She said the competitors help each other as if they were one big family. And she 
Has said she simply dreams of a peaceful life. That last arrow was a really positive one for Marie Cecile Boeuf. Although it was really after the first couple of shots going to be an uphill battle to actually take the first set. It's a nice confidence boosting shot from her. Just that six that she started with that was problematic. So all of the scores are being verified now by the officials. <laughs> really there. Poised to begin the second set. So once again, clarification on the way it all works. It's three arrows per set. You get two points if you win the set. One point each if it is tied and it is six points required to win the match. If everything's completely tied at the end, then we go to a single arrow shoot-off. Marie-Cécile Leboeuf of France to shoot first in this second set. Solid seven to begin. If the arrow catches the line, then the higher score will be awarded. Oh, yes, very good, a 10. The first 10 we've seen in this match, Yulia Shevchuk. Now in compound, only the inner ring counts for 10, but this is recurve, the outer ring does. That is certainly going to be a nine for Marie Cecile Berth. It's on the line, well over it. And that's her best. So the last two shots have been the best so far for each of the competitors. That is a weaker one for Shevchuk, and suddenly there's a real opportunity here for Marie-Cécile Berth to put Yulia Shevchuk under a little scoreboard pressure. She can match that last shot. Oh, that's unfortunate, a six. So a six for Shevchuk, and she's got it. Yes, that's good enough, just about. Yulia Shevchuk wins it once again by 24 points to 22, exactly the same score as in the first set, and she is now just two set points away from taking the win. They both had two very fine shots in there. Marie-Cécile with her second. Picking up a nine. Shevchuk picking up a ten. We move any moment now to the third set and Yulia Shevchuk, if she wins this, will be the Invictus Games champion.
We go to the third and potentially final set of this gold medal match in the women's novice recurve competition at the Dusseldorf 2023 Invictus Games. The competitor who loses the previous set shoots first, and it's a, a tough <laughs> opener for Marie-Cécile Boeuf. Opportunity for Shevchuk to uh, put a little pressure on with this first attempt. She's been brilliant so far. Yeah, very good, an eight. Very good. That will help her keep in touch. Seven for Marie-Cécile Boeuf. So, so steady. Yulia Shevchuk a nine. And she's really close now at a four-point margin to taking the Invictus Games gold medal. Well, that is absolutely fantastic. <laughs> oh, what a shot from Marie-Cécile Boeuf. Now, that has made things very interesting. Seven required for the title. And it's enough, she has it. Yulia Shevchuk of Ukraine is the Invictus Games champion. She wins three straight sets. And in doing so, is victorious over Marie-Cécile Boeuf. Lovely final shot, though, from Marie-Cécile of France. Picking up the maximum with probably the shot of the whole match. Made it very competitive. Each of the sets was decided by just two points. They were very close. we we'll wait for it to all be confirmed. But by a margin of six set points to zero, it is the gold confirmed for Yulia Shevchuk of Ukraine in the Novice Recurve Women's Competition. The two scientists and medical practitioners from there Respective nations, armed forces, giving us very good entertainment in this novice week of gold medal match. And Marie Cécile of France taking a deserved silver medal. Let's have a look back at some of the moments of the contest and a very engaging one it was too as Yulia Shevchukov Ukraine bested Marie Cecile of France by six set points to zero.
We'll move in a moment to the gold medal match in the men's novice recurve competition. Representing Poland, Thomas Zajaski. And Bob Torup of Denmark. This is the men's novice recurve gold medal match. Tomasz Jarski from Poland. Very impressive so far. A very good competition. Top in the ranking round, Bob Tarup. Also right up there, second in the ranking round. So the two best performers in that ranking round of established themselves at the top seeds, made it all the way through the elimination matches. From the round of 16 through to the quarter-final, into the semi-final stage, they've had to really play so well to get to the gold medal match, as you'd expect, because this is an Invictus Games final. It's going to be always very strong competition. We look over the shoulder of uh, Bob Torup and at Tomasz Jaski. Set play scoring in operation in a recurve final. Three arrows per set, two points for winning the set. One point each if you have the same score. That will do. That will do indeed as a start. Not too bad, an eight from uh, Torup. Now to uh, Tomasz Jaski. Oh, this is a good beginning. A nine after the ten. Consistent from Torup. That will be reviewed. That's the meaning of the asterisk. We'll look at whether that caught the line. Well, that's brilliant. Absolutely superb, and he's won it. Tomasz Jarski guaranteed to take the first set. Six. 
whether that has caught the line. It might well be a seven. I think that possibly has been upgraded. But a six-point margin for Tomasz Jarski over Bob Torup. That was absolutely impeccable from Jarski. Just two points lost. They will review that second arrow of the ball Torup. So over now to the officials for confirmation as we look back at a great start from Tomasz Jarski. Just to let you know that that second arrow, as we suspected, was upgraded from a seven to an eight for Bob Torup. So it makes it a five point margin of victory, not six for Jarski in the first. Once again, if it catches the line, then the highest score is given. And he's going to take some beating, is Tomasz Jarski. Very good qualification session, the Danes as a team. Bob Torup along with Jesper Smolarup. And it will be Bob Torup to go now. The team competition to come later. Six to begin. Real chance here for Jarski to stamp his authority on this second set. It's good, it's an eight. Opportunity now for Bob Torup. Put a little pressure on uh, Jarski. Oh, well, or maybe not. That's outstanding from Tomasz Jarski. Second ten. Well, this needs to be a really good final shot for Bob Torup. If he's going to have a chance of getting something out of this set. And it is very good. It's really strong. Nonetheless, six to tie, seven to win. He's got it. He's got it comfortably. Tomasz Jarski of Poland. And all of that meaning a three-point margin of victory and four set points in total for Jarski. All of those numbers now will be confirmed. But things are looking very compelling for Tomasz Jarski, who's taken this second set and needs just one more to be the Invictus Games champion. What a super day he's having, the impressive Tomasz Jarski of Poland.
into the third set and potentially the final set. Let us see what happens here as uh, Bob Torup attempts to pressurise Tomasz Jaski. Good start from Torup, eight. And it's an eight from Jarski as well, so deadlocked at the beginning of the third set. The recurve bow much simpler than the compound one. Compound still to come. And this is good from Bob Torup. And that is also very good from Thomas Jarski. Matching each other. Drama here as Bob Torup has a huge shot to try to keep this gold medal match going. It looks as though it's caught the line. It's very close. Seven is what it's been given as. So there's an opportunity for Jarski, and he has it. And even if that is reviewed for Torup and upgraded to an eight, Jarski has got it anyway. He is the Invictus Games champion. He wins it by six set points without reply. There is your gold medalist, Thomas Jarski of Poland. Bob Turup with a very strong final set. That was his best, including his only 10. But Tomasz Jarski producing three tens and four nines. That's a very high scoring display from the pole. Confirmation of the victory by six set points without reply to Tomasz Jarski of Poland over Bob Torup of Denmark. Great display from Bob Torup to get all the way through to the final to take the silver medal. And the Danish team will be in action later on in the team competition. Performed well in the qualification phase in the top three. So coming up next, it will be the Women's Open Recurve Gold Medal Match. The USA-France encounter. Gold medal match in the Women's Open Recurve competition. Coming your way very soon at the Invictus Games in Dusseldorf, Germany.
before we go any further with the action. Some medal ceremonies to come your way. Now time for the medal ceremony for the Invictus Games Dusseldorf 2023 in archery, women's novice recon. The medal ceremony for the women's novice recurve competition as part of archery at the Invictus Games of 2023, the Dusseldorf Germany Games. Presentation party. The winner of the bronze medal representing Canada, Tracy Barlow. Naval Logistics Officer Tracy Barlow from Canada, from New Brunswick, wins the bronze medal. A fantastic performance from her. Great member of the Canadian team, not just in individual sports, but in team competitions like wheelchair rugby. Tracy Barlow the takes of the bronze. The medal, representing France, Marie Cécile. Marie Cécile is the silver medalist, the doctor from the French Armed Forces. A wonderful display throughout the day to get all the way to the final. And a great member of the French team as well, also involved in the wheelchair rugby competitions and so much more. Two medics met in the final, one from the French Army, one from the Ukrainian Armed Forces. Yulia Shevchuk, victorious, but as she herself said, when we are here at these games, we are all one family, all working towards peace, all lifting each other up. And if the others 
brought the best out of her, then it truly was her best, and she truly is the best. Yulia Shevchuk, the Victor's Games champion. The medalists in the Women's Novice Rico competition at the Invictus Games. will be the men's novice recurve victory ceremony to come and then we'll get on with the action and four more gold medal matches to bring you ceremony for the men's novice recurve competition as part of archery at the Dusseldorf 2023 Invictus Games. A beautiful day and this was an exquisite competition. Such clarity of shot making from the two gentlemen that made it through to the final and indeed from the bronze medalist. A very high standard. Forces are represented both on the podium and in the presentation party. Vadim Maslichenko of Ukraine, the winner of the bronze medal.
very good match with Vladimir Tovkis, familiar figure at these Invictus Games. And in Maznichenko is the bronze medalist. He won it seven set points to three in what really was a close, close match. Bob the Torup of Denmark is the winner of the silver medal. Wonderful performance from the Danish team today. And individually, Bob Torup, highly impressive. The silver medalist and a member of his own country's armed forces presenting him with his medal. The champion, well, this gentleman was magnificent, wasn't he? Never really seemed in doubt. Thomas Szczarski of Poland. He was going to have to be very good to beat Bob Torup, and he wasn't very good. He was outstanding. To be frank, he barely dropped a point. Three tens, four nines, absolutely terrific. Consistent the whole way through. It was the best in the ranking round, and he's got the gold medal. <laughs> the medalists in the novice Rika competition for men at the Invictus Games of Dusseldorf 2023 and the archery competitions. We have much more to come, four more gold medal matches, no less, and we'll get underway pretty quickly with the Women's Open recurve final. gold medal action to come with Jessica Garcia of the United States of America and Catherine of France. The women's open recurve gold medal match. This is going to be extremely interesting. Two 
very high quality archers are about to meet technical sergeant Jessica Garcia with the United States Air Force against Catherine Denali of France and we have in technical sergeant Garcia a medalist from the Warrior Games in Orlando Florida last year silver medalist in the Air Force recurve archery team second overall in the individual category so a dual silver medalist and in her opponent Catherine from France the silver medalist at the World Military Games in Wuhan in the para recurve event that was in 2019 we get underway Starts with a seven from Jessica Garcia. We have a look at Catherine. Oh, yes. Fabulous beginning. That is plumb in the centre. That seven from Garcia is going to be reviewed. I think it's pretty clear it'll be given as well. That arrow on the left is on the line. So call it a 16, that's probably going to be a 17. Now to Catherine Denari. And if you wonder why we're referring to a lot of the French competitors by first name, it has been the established protocol as set by the French delegation. But obviously each competitor is uh, different in what they prefer. But by and large, it has been the established way. So it's a great opportunity here for Catherine. I think realistically she needs six to tie and seven to win it. And that is what she's done quite comfortably. <laughs> Catherine Denari takes it 28 to what is probably going to be upgraded to 25. And two set points to the French competitor and the medalist from the Military World Games in Wuhan. Nine, eight. They're both really such high quality archers. And Garcia a serving technical sergeant, uh, non-commissioned rank in the United States Air Force. It is uh, a rank of great importance and of uh, real responsibility it's the sixth enlisted rank Garcia has responsibility for civilian law in her work in the Air Force. She actually was an extremely accomplished association football player, a soccer player. Went to college on a scholarship. And when she was injured, she chose to discard the scholarship and to join the military. She didn't feel it was right to take the scholarship when she couldn't play and made a decision of extreme morality of real principle. That's how she's uh, lived her whole life. Now we go into the second set. Good beginning, nine for Garcia. lovely that at an event like the Invictus Games we get this meeting of a Warrior Games medalist and a World Military Games medalist and we're getting a really great match this is so enjoyable and actually if you disregard the very first arrow that's seven from Garcia 
she has started to settle into the match now really starts to settle into it it's a nine that's going to be reviewed as to whether it's just clipped the line Denali with a nine as well oh this is going to go right down to the last shot Very impressive from Garcia, three nines. Remember, one of them is going to be reviewed, that second one, that could be crucial. This has got to be really, really good, and it is, unfortunately for Denari, not going to be sufficient to get anything out of the set. And that means that Jessica Garcia has levelled the match at two set points apiece. Just to remind you, first to six to win the title. On we go into the third set. Technical Sergeant Jessica Garcia of the United States Air Force. Tremendous track and field competitor, very good former association footballer. She has leveled the match. Now we see what kind of uh, reply Catherine Denari has. She's no stranger, this French competitor, to being in big finals. from Garcia. And it is a very impressive nine from Catherine. Just as was the case with the first hour of the first set, Garcia having some problems and now having to play catch up. Got such good technique, though. Just wonder with this if we're going to go the distance. Wow, only a two point gap. only a six for Garcia so it's five for the set for Catherine Denari France and done done comfortably so 24 to 20 Catherine Denari has gone into the lead Now over to Jessica Garcia, who 
has not been quite as consistent as Katarin, but the quality of some of her individual shots have been superb. She was the top performer, Technical Sergeant Garcia, in the ranking round. Katarin was the second strongest. At the moment, it is the second best who has the upper hand when it really counts in this final Women's Open recurve gold medal match. from their point of view, I just mean for us watching it because it really is such an engrossing match. We're about to go into end, or set I should say, number four. The ends used for compound. Big opportunity for technical sergeant Jessica Garcia to put some pressure on Catherine early on. It's not a bad beginning, solid seven. It's definitely a 10, done more than catch the line. If Catherine wins this set, she wins the gold. Garcia giving it everything. Look at the line of the sun, not the easiest to, to line up the shots. It's a seven for Catherine. It gives Garcia a palpable opportunity to tie this match. Oh, that's really unfortunate. It's a five. And as a result, it's a five for Denari for the win and for the gold. Which she has accomplished with a seven. It is Catherine of France who is the Invictus Games champion. Really, that was very entertaining. Catherine winning it six set points to two. We saw glimpses of technical sergeant Garcia's finest archery. But they were always going to be tough opposition for each other. Considering that we have a Warrior Games medalist against a World Military Games medalist, and it is the French competitor who is overjoyed to be the Invictus Games champion. performance including two tens and five nines from Katerina Denari it was technical sergeant Jessica Garcia who said that when she played for the Air Force's soccer team she Going to her first experience of seeing how powerful sport 
can be in bringing people together, bringing countries together, in working towards greater understanding and less hostility and more peace. And her words ringing so true here at the Invictus Games. We look out over the archery fields at the Invictus Park, next to the Merkur Spiel Arena in Dusseldorf, Germany. As the dust settles on what was a very enjoyable Women's Open Recurve Gold medal match. And we still have more to come. Let's have a look back at some of the very finest moments of a very fine contest. Don't go too far away because we'll be continuing the action. The men's open recurve gold medal match. The next to come. Coming up next, the men's open recurve gold medal match. Gareth Fuller of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland and Romania's Julian Capatina.
The men's open recurve gold medal contest about to begin at the Invictus Games. And it is a meeting between Gareth Fuller of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, a detective sergeant in Derbyshire Police and formerly of the British Army, and First Sergeant Julian Capazzina of Romania who deployed to Iraq and Afghanistan during his time in the Romanian Armed Forces. Julian Capazzina, already an Invictus Games champion in team archery at The Hague. And he was a medalist at the National Championships last year against Gareth Fuller of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. 50. And was actually initially a reserve for Team UK and has been upgraded and uh, a very good job too because he's been a massive asset to the team. He said he was elated as soon as he was told that a place had become available. Not too easy for the two competitors. It's going to be a nine for Fuller. Capazzina looking very good as well. Nines all around so far in this first set. Two points if you win it. One point apiece if you tie. An eight that's going to be reviewed. It's very close. Might well be a nine. for Capazzina as well. Oh, outstanding from Gareth Fuller at 10 to win it. Now that's got to be confirmed because that first arrow of Julian Capazzina is going to be reviewed. But if these scores stand, then Gareth Fuller has snatched it with a fabulous last shot. Mark Gentleman John, who 10, 9, 9. was deployed to uh, Bosnia in 1992. He also completed postings in Canada, Germany and Norway. We look back at this uh, very interesting First set. The first one being reviewed. So we're going to get clarification soon on what that means. But Fuller. Oh, there we go. That was indeed a 10. So the first set has been tied one point apiece. I did mention that nine needed to be reviewed and that it looked very close to the line. So one point each. Fascinating, these two are well matched.
into the second set. Gareth Fuller of the United Kingdom, Julian Capazzina of Romania, tied. Good beginning, a nine, secure from Capazzina. Fuller's repost is not quite as strong. That is a seven. Chance here for Capazzina to pull away. Well, it's a seven from him, too. Yes, brilliant from Fuller, who joined an archery club in 2018. It's been a huge part of his life since then. He's had a wonderful career in the police force after his time in the army. As Capazzina scores a nine, but this is winnable for Gareth Fuller. Nine for the victory. Yeah. Oh, that is just about good enough from Gareth Fuller of the United Kingdom by a single point. This is such a tight match. And he gets the two set points, the first set that's been won. He said, Gareth Fuller, that training for the games has been an incredibly positive experience. It's meant that he's actually created better relationships with his family, his friends, his colleagues. And he said he just couldn't wait to get out there and compete and see what he could do. Well, that has also been uh, upgraded, and it's another tie. to set number three with this absolutely unpredictable is an eight from Capazzina, who on two occasions has seen his score change and him take a point. But he's trailing by two at the start of this, the third set. What a match. Capazzina. <laughs> Matched by Fuller, who is two points ahead going into this last shot. Are we finally going to see separation on the scoreboard? 
well. It's an eight from Capacina, and it's winnable here for Gareth Fuller. Seven would do it. And it is the seven just about. So we wait for confirmation that Gareth Fuller has taken the third set. And if he has done, he's going to be four set points to two in the lead and closing in on the Invictus Games title. That was a nervous set, but that first shot from Fuller was such high quality. Ten, nine, seven. So it is Gareth Fuller who has secured the set. He leads 4-2, Julian Capazzina, first sergeant in the Romanian Armed Forces, will go first in what could be an absolutely crucial penultimate set. The gold medalist with the team at the last Invictus Games. It begins well. What an excellent first shot from Julian Capazzina for the nine. Fuller with an eight. Are we going to head into a deciding set, which would be the first in all of these finals? Oh, we may well do. We may well do. from Fuller. Capazzina could get this wrapped up with Fuller not even needing to take the last shot. And that is fantastic. He's won it and we're going into a deciding set. Fuller producing a seven, so that is a strong, well, it's actually been upgraded to an eight, a strong margin of victory for Julian Capacina, nine, nine, ten. That was some outstanding archery from the first sergeant in the Romanian army. And for the first time, we are going through to a deciding set. You are just joining the archery coverage at the Invictus Games in Dusseldorf. You picked a fine time to switch on your television because this is a brilliant match. I think it's safe to say it is the match of the whole day so far. The men's open recurve final. The simpler of the two bows, the recurve, compared to the compound, but there's nothing simple when it comes to working out who is going to take this. 
Will it be the former member of the British Army and current detective sergeant in the Derbyshire Constabulary, the UK's Gareth Fuller, or will it be currently serving first sergeant Julian Capazzina of the Romanian Armed Forces? First two sets were tied. Fuller won the third, Capazzina won the fourth. If this is tied, we go to a single arrow shoot off. It's a seven to begin from Capazzina, which allows Fuller the chance to put some early pressure on. He produces a seven that is surely going to only add to the drama that we're all feeling, the tension that we're all feeling. That's stronger from Capazzina. Can Fuller match it? The answer is that he can produce a ten. Huge shot for Julian Capazzina. That is extremely good. It's a nine that might be a ten. But it's in the hands of Gareth Fuller of Team UK. And he has produced a nine now. We're going to have to wait and see. But I think, well, that's actually been given as a ten now for Fuller. And if that is confirmed, then that is going to be the title for Gareth Fuller of Team UK. But we've got a couple of reviews now to take place. And it's very close. It's 27-25. 10, 10, 8. Provisionally, this is Fuller's gold. Just wait. Julian Capazzina has come over to congratulate Gareth Fuller. All eyes on the officials. And it looks as though it is 28 to 25. I did think that first step from Fuller looked like it was more of an eight. Well, now it's changed again. Well, hang on a moment. Well, hang on a moment. It looks as though it's been tied. It has been tied. 26 all. And that means it's five all, and we are going to, would you believe, a single arrow shoot off. My goodness me, it's all down to one last arrow. I think that Julian Capazzina thought that that was over. He came across actually to shake the hand of Gareth Fuller. Just waiting for clarification. No, that has changed. I did wonder about that because that first arrow from Fuller certainly looked like it was an eight, and he has been awarded the match. The final calculations are in. It's Gareth Fuller. He wins the deciding set. This gentleman, Detective Sergeant Gareth Fuller, was only a reserve for the Invictus Games team. What good news that a place became available, not just for him, but for the team, because how Team UK has needed Gareth Fuller. A fabulous performance from the former British Army veteran.
and he's taken the gold medal. A brilliant match. Gareth Fuller of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland beats Julian Capazzina of Romania, first sergeant in the Romanian Armed Forces, and he does it six set points to four. One of the matches of the entire archery competition, if not the match. Two more finals that remain. That's the end of the recurve action. We'll move to compound in due course as the sun begins to set at the end of a long session of competition. ceremony for the women's open recurve competition in archery at the Invictus Games in Dusseldorf, Germany. What absolute delight on the face of Lindsay Kelly of Team United Kingdom, who said the joy and laughter of being around supportive, like-minded people in Invictus Team UK helps remind me of the fantastic times I've had throughout my life. This is one of them, certainly, for her. And what company she keeps. Look at that podium. Lindsay Kelly of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland said, bad days will still come, but I now understand that they are not permanent, only temporary. If I can achieve this, I truly believe anyone can. I'm not a failure. I'm proud of myself for doing this, and long may it continue. We'll be even prouder now, Lindsay Kelly, for you are an Invictus Games medalist.
in the Women's Open recurve competition. Technical Sergeant Jessica Garcia of the United States Air Force said that early on in her time in the military, she realized the power of sport to bring different communities together. Now she's experienced it at the Invictus Games, having been a Warrior Games silver medalist in archery. And the Invictus Games champion, representing France, Kathleen! From the Military World Games podium in 2019 to the Invictus Games champion of 2023, Catherine of France has won the whole thing in Dusseldorf and won it with a fabulous display of such composed and stylish archery. A great category, so competitive. Just to make it into that top three is an extraordinarily good day's work. The medalists in the open recurve competition for women in archery at the Invictus Games. Now time for the medal ceremony in the men's open recurve category as part of the archery competitions at the Dusseldorf 2023 Invictus Games. Talk about an extraordinarily 
dramatic final. This was sensational entertainment. And it's been an extremely good category as well for the Romanian team. Though they did not manage to secure the title, they picked up two medals. The gentleman who was originally a reserve for his country's team is unparalleled here. There's no substituting the quality of Gareth Fuller. Introduction of the presentation party. Emil Kojokaru of Romania, Master Sergeant in the Armed Forces, takes the bronze medal. A gentleman who served in Afghanistan and who specially came to these games to participate in archery has, for the second Invictus Games in a row, managed to get onto the podium. His own teammate, Julian Capazzina, another medalist from The Hague in 2022, is back on the podium again, beaming after a wonderful performance. He too served in Afghanistan and also was deployed to Iraq. And the first sergeant was first rate in getting all the way through to the final. But it's hard to believe that this gentleman wasn't even one of the first picks for the Invictus Games team. Gareth Fuller said when the phone rang and he found out a place was available, he was elated. Well, now Team UK's elated because how they needed him. He held his nerve, the detective sergeant in the Derbyshire Constabulary, in one of the most dramatic finals that we've seen in archery at these Invictus Games. He won in style, and he was immediately congratulated by the gentleman he beat, Julian Capazzina, the Invictus spirit writ large. The medalist in the open recurve competition for men in archery at the Invictus Games in Dusseldorf. Fabulous crowd gathered here to enjoy all of the action, and we have still got more to come. The recurve is over, and now it will be time for compound gold medal matches. Don't go too far away. More coming up.
entertainment. This promises to be. We go to the Women's Open Compound Gold Medal match and an all-American encounter in the Invictus Park. A nice little... <laughs> oh, that's great, isn't it? Moment of respect and affection between the two competitors. Fahima Boston Ali and Tiffany Hudgens. This is the Women's Open Compound gold medal match as we have a look at Fahima Boston Ali. Retired corporal from the Marine Corps. Now the format is different for a compound competition as we look at retired gunnery sergeant Tiffany Hudgens from US Special Operations Command. It is a cumulative score. And as I'm sure you can see, the bow is very different. We'll talk more about that in due course, but we're into end one of five. There are no set points. This is match play scoring, so every single number is going to count. Nice and relaxed is Fahima Boston Ali. Well, you would do after the start that she's had. <laughs> Two very good shots. Oh, yeah, excellent. A nine, because in compound, the inner ring is the 10. Different from recurve. So 27 23 at the end of the first end. I mentioned at the start, this is a cumulative approach. It's called match play scoring compared to set play scoring in recurve. And the compound bow, it uses a pulley system that takes the strain off the bow, providing some slack for the archer. It is considered to be easier to shoot with accuracy, hence the different setup with the targets. More strength is required with the recurve bow, which has just a single string. So all of the calculations are in progress. So change to Hudgens' score, it's been upgraded to 24. Every single point can count. And we, on we go even to end number two of five. This is end number two 
of five. Fahima Boston Ali of the United States of America, retired corporal from the Marine Corps, leading retired gunnery sergeant Tiffany Hudgens from US Special Operations Command. It is a seven to begin for Four. Hudgens. Boston Alley with a nine. It's going to be a six for Tiffany Hudgens. There's an opportunity now for Boston Alley to really start to pull away in this match. is eight. And that will help hugely. Yeah. Tiffany Hudgens with an excellent 10. That's the first 10 of the match. That's a pretty good reply from Boston Alley with another nine. So at the end of the second, 54 to 47, the gap has grown. But there is still some way to go. doesn't love a bit of a Hanson but it takes you back listening to it and we're going to take you on now into end number three of five the women's open compound gold medal match at the Invictus Games great to have your company thank you so much for being part of the Dusseldorf 2023 games they may be drawing to a close these games but They've been an absolute delight. It's a wonderful, wonderful event. And soon we'll start to look forward to Vancouver Whistler 2025. But let's first of all look forward to end number three. Tiffany Hudgens to shoot first. She can still get back in this. It takes just one wayward shot from your opponent and that whole lead is gone. You're back in it. Not that Boston Alley looks as though that's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, she really doesn't look like it. Strong from Hudgens and nine. Level on 63, but Boston Alley with an arrow in hand. And she's made use of it with another nine. And it is nine points now, the lead that the retired Marine Corporal has got. The 
This is high quality archery from Hudgens. But Boston Alley so far is handling that. She's matching it, she's even exceeding it. And that is really secure from Fahima Boston Alley as Hudgens raised her level. So did Boston Alley, 81 to 72. Just having all of the numbers confirmed. It's the best that we've seen so far from Hudgens. Boston Alley has scored 27 in every single end. The gap was three after end one, then it grew to seven, now it's become nine. An ultimate end, and Tiffany Hudgens of the United States of America trails her teammate Fahima Boston Alley in this enjoyable women's open compound gold medal match at the Invictus Games of 2023. This gives Boston Alley a chance to increase the lead. She's done it. Such a high quality archer. Hutchins, accurate and consistent. This is marvellous, really impressive from Fahima Boston Ali. Reaches 100 points. Hudgens with another really strong end. 25, the second end in a row in which she's done that. But this is superb from Fahima Boston Ali. She's got a 12 point advantage going into the decider. She could be in a position now, Fahima Boston Ali, to wrap this up with an arrow to spare. But then it can all change in an instant. It looks like a huge gap, 12 points. One miss and suddenly the whole thing has transformed. And it does happen sometimes. The consistency of these competitors is so impressive. It's the last end in the women's open compound gold medal match. The Dusseldorf 2023 Invictus Games would begin with Tiffany Hudgens, who has to overcome a 12 point deficit. That's 
that's a good way to start. Strong first shot from the retired gunnery sergeant. But this young competitor has been phenomenal. She leads by 13 with two shots to go. And the opportunity is here now for Fahima Boston Ali to win the gold medal with this shot. Absolutely first rate. It's hers. Hudgens with a seven. And now this is. A lap of honour for Fahima Boston Ali. What will her final shot be? The gold medal won by Fahima Boston Ali, retired corporal from the United States Marine Corps. 136 to 121. And we're just waiting for confirmation of all of those numbers. Package two, nine, eight, six. And it has now been made official. Fahima Boston Ali of the United States of America is the Invictus Games champion. She beats her teammate. Tiffany Hudgens in a very entertaining gold medal match, 136 to 121. Confirmation of the win for Fahima Boston Ali, retired corporal from the United States Marine Corps over retired gunnery sergeant from Special Operations Command, Tiffany Hudgens. There is just one more contest remaining. It will be the men's open compound gold medal match. It's on its way. Time for this very last match in this session. The men's open compound gold medal match. Tom Grunwald of Germany against Pablo Lukiv of Ukraine.
Tom Grunwald of the host nation, Germany. And Pavlo Luchkiv of this Ukraine team that has been so popular at these gates. So nine to begin from Luchkiv. And matched by Grunwald. If you're new to watching compound competition, it is perhaps not as well known as recurve due to recurve's prominence in the Olympics. Then the difference is there's no set play. This is an every arrow counts match play system. So all that really matters is that cumulative score. And that 10 from Pavlo Luchkiv will help hugely. You can't win an end. You can simply win the match. And at the moment, there's little to separate them. Luchkiv gets the nine. A ten from Grunwald will tie things at the end of the first end. And he's come very close to it. 27 28 at the close of end number one. from Luchkiv has been upgraded to a 10, so that's a 29 from Pavlo Luchkiv. Brilliant start. Two-point gap going into the second of five ends. And number two begins. Good start from Tom Grunwald. Yeah! Pavlo Luchkiv matches it. Still the gap is two. A long way to go. And this could keep us guessing. Right the way up to that last round of shots. This really is impressive. The accuracy from these two gentlemen. Luchkiv with a 10. And for Grunwald, it is yet another nine. Luchkiv 
Luchkiv's shot is a nine, so the gap grows very marginally. Luchkiv was two up at the end of the first end, he's now three up at the end of the second. He's been very outspoken about the need for better training facilities for veterans and adaptive sport. And he has called so audibly for a change towards greater accessibility in his own country. and his teammates made the observation that when you're in that sort of half year build up to the Invictus Games, you've got the opportunity to focus solely on sport and to not think about the other immense problems that naturally are surrounding all of these competitors from Team Ukraine. Very interesting point was made by one of Pavlo Luchkiv's teammates, Vladimir Hera, about adjusting to life outside of the military once you've had to be medically discharged. He said, the first thing to do with your compensation money, any compensation money you receive, he said, first thing by a house or a car, and second, buy a gym membership. The first will give you accessibility, the second will give you motivation. Three-point margin maintained. Can Grunwald just find a way to get a point or two back in this end. It's over to Luchkiv, and Luchkiv produces a nine, so they are tied in this end. The gap remains three. It's far too close for any degree of comfort for Pavlo Luchkiv. And it's a very good match. Hope you're enjoying it. Well, we are about to begin the penultimate end. If you're just joining now, this is the men's open compound gold medal match. The last match of this session as the sun begins to set at the Invictus Park. Tom Grunwald of the host nation, Germany. Three points behind Ukraine's Pavlo Luchkiv. He starts with another secure nine. Every single arrow has been a nine so far from Grunwald, but it's another 10 for Luchkiv. Nine again from Grunwald. Is still 
a good score from Luchkiv. It's been given as an eight. So level on 18 with one to go in this end. Now then, that's an eight from Grunwald. That's his first that hasn't been a nine. Luchkiv with a chance to extend the lead. A good chance. And it's a chance taken. It's a nine that's going to be reviewed. It could well be a four-point advantage for Pavlo Luchkiv going into the last end. That is going to get looked at again, that final shot from Luchkiv. It was close. Might be more. Lovely support for both of these competitors. Chance of Ukraine and chance of Tom. changes here the uh, competitors and the crowd there we do see that change an upgrade for Luchkiv from 107 to 113 So it's now a six-point advantage as we go into this last end. Pavlo Luchkiv was up two after the first, up three after the third, following on from the second where he added an extra point, and now he's doubled that advantage crucially as we go into the last end. A lot required now of Tom Grunwald. Grunwald Starts nicely with a nine. He's almost there. Nine from Luchkiv. As long as he is even reasonably close to matching Grunwald in this end, he's going to take it. He can stand to lose five points. Grunwald has been so consistent with hitting those nines. Only one that's been lower. Hasn't this been a wonderful match? A 10 from Luchkiv. And one would think he's all but assured of the Invictus Games title now. The last shot for Tom Grunwald. And Grunwald does well, it is another nine, he's been super, but he just needs three, Pavlo Luchkiv, to be the Invictus Games champion, and he's done it absolutely comfortably with a nine to finish, 141 to 134. The Invictus Games champion is Ukraine's Pavlo Luchkiv. Great performance from the host nations, Tom Grunwald. And a lot of respect between these two competitors. That was such high quality archery. Big scores. Grunwald 27 in every single end except the fourth when he produced 26. And Luchkiv a 29, 28, 27, 29, 28. High scoring in the open compound gold medal match for men at the Invictus Games. It's a win for Pavlo Luchkiv of Ukraine over Germany's Tom Grunwald.
Let's have a look back at how the gold medal was won. <laughs> Lovely photo opportunity and so much celebration. And we'll bring you more scenes of celebration as the medal ceremonies come along shortly. There is a camaraderie and togetherness about the Invictus Games that quite sets it apart from anything else in the world. The victory ceremonies for the two open compound finals, the women's and men's events, are coming along any moment now. The medal ceremony for the women's open compound event in archery at the Dusseldorf 2023 Invictus Games. This is an extraordinarily special podium extraordinarily special. It was a year ago that an individual who's formally known as Yulia Majewska, but informally known as Tyra, was due to compete at these games. She was captured during her medical service and was not able to compete. Instead, her 19-year-old daughter, Anna Sofia Puzanova, attended the games and won a bronze medal in archery. Now, a year on, Yulia Paevska has made it to the games and she has made it onto the podium. Yulia Paevska, known as Tyra to the world, whose tireless medical service has saved hundreds upon hundreds of lives, has kept a date with destiny. The place that was occupied by her daughter last year in The Hague is now hers. She is the bronze medalist.
She is not just an inspiration. She has been a salvation. Two splendid competitors from the United States of America contested the gold medal match, taking second place and the silver medal, Tiffany Hudgens. The retired gunnery sergeant from US Special Operations Command. A special performance in the archery competition, but this individual was phenomenal. Fahima Boston Ali, the retired corporal from the United States Marine Corps, is the Invictus Games champion. She took a lead early on in the final and never let it go. What a podium, what a podium. And it is the dream outcome that so many thought was a fairy tale, fanciful a year ago. Yulia Payevska has spent so much of her life, especially in the last decade or so, being in the background, working for the well-being of others, risking her life, and how nice that she gets this rare opportunity, a moment of calm, a moment of peacefulness, to be centre stage. That's what she deserves. One more ceremony to come, and it will be in the men's open compound competition.
medal ceremony for the men's open compound competition in archery at the Dusseldorf 2023 Invictus Games. Absolute jubilation for the hosts of Germany. What a special moment this is for Corporal Second Class Marcel Nyagu of Romania. He is a marvellously skilled athlete in so many different disciplines, but particularly an outstanding archer with a great competitive record, and he's taken that to the Games. This is a special place for Marcel Nyagu. It was in Germany where his life was saved. He had 16 surgical procedures to reconstruct his legs after being injured in Afghanistan. And he returns to the place where his life was saved and where he spent eight months rebuilding and starting again. And it is a competitor from Germany who takes the silver medal, Tom Grunwald, who has tears in his eyes. But he has Dusseldorf cheering for him. A moment that he will never forget. <laughs> Ukraine's Pavlo Luchkiv has called for greater accessibility for veterans who have been injured in serving their country, greater opportunities for them to train together to recover together, to be comrades again in adaptive sport. And he is now centre stage as the world watches on this brilliant archer who is leading the move for greater publicity and greater opportunity and greater accessibility for him and his teammates. Now the eyes of the world are on him, and in so many respects, part of his mission has been accomplished. What an ambassador for adaptive sport Pavlo Luchkiv of Ukraine is. Lovely a sight that is. How wonderful. It's such a moving way to bring to a close this session of archery at Dusseldorf 2023. the medalists in the men's open compound event at Dusseldorf 2023.
Well, hasn't it been a fantastic session of competition at the Invictus Games in archery? Let's have a look back at some of the moments of the day so far. And that brings to a close our coverage of the archery in this session from the Invictus Park. It's been a great pleasure having your company. Hope you enjoyed all of those fantastic gold medal matches. More to come, though, as archery goes on at the Invictus Games in Dusseldorf.
Welcome to this final session of the archery competition here at the Invictus Games in Dusseldorf. The culmination of two days of competition. Ukraine and Poland will face off in this first event the novice recurve gold medal match for the recurve archery in a mixed team competition. We've got two formats of the sport here at the Invictus Games. Recurve and compound. Recurve is the one you might be more familiar with. It features in the Olympic Games. Recurve bows, the more classic look. A simple one that the archers simply pull back. Not the same mechanical advantages that you'll get from the compound bows, which we'll see a little later on in the competition. Although they may look pretty advanced, and they are pretty advanced with the sights. They are essentially the same kind of bow that's been used for centuries. Poland and Ukraine have fought their way through this competition. Tomasz Jaski won gold in the individual event. Also part of the gold medal winning sitting volleyball team from yesterday evening. His teammate Martin Bretzva was alongside him on the volleyball court in the Mekospiel Arena. And now he's alongside him on the archery range, just 100 metres or so outside in the Greater Invictus Games Park. Leszek Stepien is the other Polish athlete. Vladimir Tokis of Ukraine, beaten in the bronze medal match by his teammate, Vadim Maznitsenko. There he is. Already a medalist in this competition, now going for the goals. Their teammate Maxim Zubov has had a busy week competing in plenty of the other events here at the Invictus Games. Started off on the first day with the powerlifting competition. So recurve matches are decided using a set scoring system. Teams will pick up two set points for winning each set, comprised of six arrows. So both teams scoring the same, and they will receive a set points, two set points for winning. The first team to reach Five set points wins the match. We might go to five sets if it's tied at four all. There's a shoot off potential as well. We'll see some of the other individual medalists later on as well. Coming up in this session, the conclusion of the competition, we have the novice. Recurve gold medal match, the open recurve gold medal match in this mixed team competition. And then, just one category in the compound, it is the mixed team open compound gold medal match. Plenty to look forward to then, beginning here. It's been busy, as you can see, an awful lot of archery lanes because they begin with preliminaries. 
and shoot their way into ranking positions for the elimination stage, which then took place for much of yesterday. And it's been going on since earlier on this morning, German time too. It's one of those sports that many of the competitors here who might be suffering with things that you can't see rather than those that you can find as a very, very therapeutic road to recovery. The focus, the process that you go through in terms of getting ready to fire, it's not just stepping up and unleashing the arrow. It is getting into the right mindset, getting your breathing right. The way you pick out the arrow, the way you load it in, the focus, the breathing, and the release, it's all one smooth process. And when many of these competitors are focusing on that, it gives them the peace of mind, it gives them that distraction so that they're not considering whatever else is going on. We're all set then. Poland shooting at target number one. Ukraine at target number two. Szyzjanski to step up first trying to eliminate the airplane noise. The airport's just nearby. And he started strongly. In that yellow scoring zone. The recurve targets slightly bigger than the compound ones. The compound bow is more accurate. I know you'll also fire from further away. As you can see, the scoring probably reflects the arrow now. Two nines to start with. And just outside. Two nines and an eight. In this first set of arrows. What's a start for Ukraine? Tovkis delivers a 10. Fatim has Nitschenka with a specially adapted bow. And another strong arrow. Advantage Ukraine.
only one clips the line. And it's another ten. Three points the advantage then already in this first set. Right back. Eight, but that has the potential to be upgraded to a nine. That's what the asterisk means next to it. It's been upgraded to a ten even. So two tens and a seven, and a strong finish from Poland. So let's see what Ukraine can do. <laughs> two both into the scoring So Clipping the line. But an eight or more, and Ukraine will take this first set. Fadim Maznichenka with the last of Ukraine's six arrows. What a finish. Right in the centre to round things off, and Ukraine take the first set. who will cross-check the positions and amend the score if necessary. I don't think it'll change the outcome of this first set, though. There weren't too many to double-check that would change Ukraine's score. Two points for that first set. Just to confirm from the officials.
start with from Poland. as a 10, it is. And a little further out, so potential advantage here for Ukraine. And if they can get in the nines and the tens. Not quite close enough to that ten line. With a strong start. That's the first one outside of the red zone. Just down at the bottom, it's a six. Fadi and Maznitschenko will focus again. Such an innovative way of using the recurve bow. But that has clipped the 10 line by the looks of it. It's a nine for now. Get that check. It could be level, but at the moment it is Poland with the one point advantage. That is solidly on the line. side so Poland finished with 46 seven fewer than in that first set 22 or more needed 22 to pick up a point 23 or more and I'll get there that is very very close it's a brilliant start same bow almost that's one of the previous arrows one arrow to go. Well, 
that'll do it. Well, the score's waiting to be confirmed. The crowd don't need any confirmation. They know that Ukraine have taken that. Brilliant. Seemed to come in at an angle over the top of the other arrows and nestle nicely in the 10. 51 to 46. then and pretty much unequivocally it is Ukraine set we will await the confirmation but they are one away from a gold medal here at the Invictus Games So Poland need to win this set in order to stay in the competition. If they are to be successful, we'll go all the way to a fifth set. That's the best chance at the moment. They start with one that's outside the yellow scoring zone. It's an eight. So, an eight with the second arrow. And all three in that outer ring. delivers a 10 right from the off to huge cheers straight in the middle Almost bank central, hitting the cross. Well, what a cluster of arrows that is. 10, 10, 
and ten. Barely room for anything else. They look like they can't believe it themselves. They are within touching distance of a gold medal. three of these in the nines and tens. That one is just outside, quivering as it lands in the eight. That's better. Perhaps, though, not quite enough. 20 needed to tie. And take Ukraine to the medal in any case. More or less, I don't think they're going to tie. I think they're going to come out on top here. One final breath and moment of concentration. Yeah! And there it is. Such consistency. And such an outburst of joy. Ukraine have done it, gold medal winners in the novice recurve mixed team event. A huge smile and a few tears of joy too as Ukraine take this Invictus Games gold medal. Poland with the silver. checks but that won't change the outcome and they've spent a long time this week together many of these competitors particularly over the last 24 hours in this archery event the last competitive event of these Invictus games friendships made to last a lifetime. <laughs> team photo for Team Ukraine.
That's a beautiful moment for everybody involved, for those that have supported them all the way through, and for the archers themselves who have just delivered and taken another brilliant step on that road to recovery. Ukraine, the gold medalist, Poland with the silver. In around half an hour's time, we'll have the next final in the Open recurve event for the mixed teams. That'll be between Great Britain and Romania, two nations who have competed well in that category already. Coming up first, though, the medal ceremony.
So here we go with the medal ceremony then for this mixed team competition. Denmark having already won bronze earlier today, beating the United Kingdom in three sets. Poland picking up silver. And Ukraine, the gold medal winners just a few moments ago. Tarup, uh, Torben Dissing and Tros Mikkelsen winning bronze for Denmark. An excellent showing from Poland in these Invictus games. Marcin Brektra already with a goal from the sitting volleyball alongside Tomasz Zizjaski. Leszek Stepin picking up the bronze too. The gold medalist from the individual event adds a silver. for them to be representing Ukraine here. Vadim Manzitsyanka, who beat his compatriots of Vladimir Tovkis in the individual event to win bronze. An emotional moment for both. Maxim Zubov as well.
more medals for Ukraine then, adding to those already picked up. Yulia Shevchuk in the women's individual novice recurve winning gold. Manzlyschenko himself winning bronze and Yulia Payevska of course winning bronze in the compound competition. Coming up next, it will be the mixed team open recurve gold medal match between the United Kingdom and Romania.
Let's welcome Romania onto the range, who have done very, very well so far in this archery competition. Julian Capazzina, Emil Kojokaru, and Edouard Romila, all very impressive just under 18 months ago in The Hague 2, and now reaching the final of this mixed team event. Up against the United Kingdom, who have also impressed. Gareth Fuller, in particular, Detective Sergeant, to give him his title in Derbyshire Police, alongside Anthony Booth and Jay Saunders. Gareth, the gold medal winner in the individual event. An event dominated by Romania, in fact. These three reach the last four. Kojokaru winning bronze against his compatriot to Eduard Romila. Julian Capazzina picking up the silver medal. Gareth Fuller in the middle in the white hat. Was also involved in the table tennis, as was Jay Saunders, 54 year old Royal Navy veteran from Hampshire. Anthony Booth, a part of the sitting volleyball team, too. That one starts just to the left of that red scoring zone. a member of uh, a local archery club has been since 2018 Gareth Fuller it's in the red that's a seven Very close to the nine line. I think it's just clipped it. We'll check it, but for now it is a nine provisionally. Yurian Capazzina, Emil Kojokaru, and Eduard Romila to 
Now shoot for Romania. Seven. Just not quite clipping the line. That one is equally close on the other side. It's been given as an eight. No doubt about that. Into the 10. As Romania take a three point advantage midway through this first set. At least that one quicker. But it has dropped down. Only a five on the outside of that blue scoring zone. <laughs> Strong second arrow from the United Kingdom in this second set of arrows. Into the middle from Fuller. Booth. Just clipping the line. It looked like a five. It's gone down as a four for now. And now upgraded. Solid in the centre of that eight. Advantage Romania in this first set. No doubt about it now. Anywhere on the target, and it's Romania set. Finishing with a flourish. It's a 10. And a 10 point advantage in the first set. Promising for Romania. Three of Romania's archers served in Afghanistan. Julian Capazina also in Iraq. Injured in Afghanistan as his vehicle passed over an IED, an improvised explosive device, and damaged his right leg. Emil Kujokaru was uh, in Romania's base in Kalat and suffered during a rocket attack way back in 2009. Edouard Romilla also involved uh, in a, an accident with his vehicle, which was struck by an IED. Information there of Romania, though, taking this first set, picking up the two points. He was in the, the same accident as Marcel Neagu, who's in the gold medal match in the compound competition, which will be coming up later on. He was uh, hospitalized and recovered here in Germany. Many of them really active in the archery competition and uh, seen them their home countries. All involved in the Hague, but many in para archery and the national championships for Romania.
aircraft flying over, right overhead in fact, as they take off and land from Dusseldorf Airport, just a short distance away. Adding to the noise that these archers have to try and tune out. It's an unfortunate start for the United Kingdom as it misses the scoring area completely. can do. It's in the seven. Little time for Booth to compose himself. Excellent shot. <laughs> Up comes the first Romanian arrow from Julian Capazzina. The A. For now, though, it's down as a seven. Oh, that's brilliant. Nestles nicely in that central ten from Eduard Romillo. Now, Emil Kozukaru. Good. Significant advantage for Romania. 27 to 16. In the blue this time. Solid eight. Anthony Booth, a bronze medalist from The Hague. It was an excellent competition for the UK archery team. What can he deliver here? It's in the eight on the line. In the seven, I should say. So, Romania. Favourites to deliver a second set. And with arrows like that, it is already secure. They have at least a point. And they're going to get more. From one of these last two arrows. Another excellent shot. Four tens and a seven. 
One more to go. That's in the nine. And it's comfortable for Romania, who move out to a four-point lead. Some have brought the Ronin in the open category for those who are much more experienced in recurve archery and in compound archery. Many you have in the novice category. Some of the bows are provided. It's an excellent setup with plenty of space for supporters to come along as it's the only competitive event still going, the Invictus Village just to one side of the archery range, still with loads to do for the friends and family. Right here, we're witnessing the penultimate events before this evening's closing ceremony. The mixed team open recurve category in Romania are in an excellent position, winning the first two sets. third set will it be the last set and will United Kingdom be able to push this a little further Jay Saunders who like many of them enjoys the process the focus six rather than an eight for United Kingdom to start off with. Everybody has a slightly different way of preparing. Breathing techniques, just like in shooting sports, very important to the stability of the arrow. <laughs> Solidly in the eight. finish this first set of three. Julian Capazzina will kick off this set for Romania with a very solid number nine. but still a good eight for Romania who are within range and can take a lead after the first three it's another eight so the UK have four points to make up here in this next set of three 
Otherwise, it is Romania's gold medal. Last arrow in this set for Jay Saunders. On the edge of the six, but not quite close enough to hit that line. So potentially the United Kingdom's last arrow of this archery competition falls to Anthony Booth. That's in the six as well. So just 18 needed for Romania from their last three arrows in the set. and Romila. There's nine of them. That is it, because that would be five points. And to finish with a flourish, perhaps. Just to add to the tension down there. There he goes, and eight takes them up to 50, the half century. And 50 for Romania means a gold medal for Romania in this Open Rico mixed team competition. Silver for United Kingdom. Zina and Kozhukaru in the medals in the individual competition. They got silver and bronze respectively. They'll now have a gold to go with it. Gareth Fuller's gold complemented now by silver in the mixed team competition. Straight sets win for Romania on the archery range here in Dusseldorf. Team, this Romanian outfit. So they defend their title. Julian Capazzina, Emil Kozhokaru and uh, Eduard Romila. They won this event in The Hague. Anthony Booth winning bronze on that occasion.
Anton Saunders being reassured by the rest of the team that he has played his part too. Are we going to rise? Are we going to 
So here we go with the medal ceremony. Then the Netherlands are back following their earlier bronze. Led out by soldiers and officials from the Bundeswehr, Germany's armed forces. Germany will be competing in the final events of the archery competition. In a moment, the mixed team open compound. The focus is on the Netherlands as well as the two teams that we have just seen competing. Romania and the United Kingdom. Edwin Beckmann, Gerard von Leuven and Jakob Hoffmann picking up bronze for the Dutch. Unconquered teams put together for the wheelchair basketball along with their friends and compatriots and the team from Germany. Edwin Beckmann, Gerard von Lerben and Jakob Hoffmann receiving those medals in front of friends and family. Jay Saunders, Gareth Fuller and Anthony Booth picking up the silver. It was bronze for the UK team in The Hague last year. Anthony Booth in the glasses, a part of that success along with Chase Melowish and Daniel O'Connor and now a silver for those three. Silver to go with the gold in the individual in for Gareth Fuller. A very, very proud moment indeed for all three of them. Anthony Booth hoping that this is an inspiration to those like him. He's already been a valuable member of the UK team for those who are in this for the first time and those younger than him and on the same journey, but a little bit further to go. The reigning champions are now the new champions too. Julian Capazzina. Emil Kozhakaru and Eduard Romila of Romania. Gold again for those three archers. Who really have used this experience to move on to great heights in para archery in their own country. Impressive showing from Romania's archery team. And it might not be the last of the Romanian medals either because three more of their archers are up soon 
in the compound competition against host nation Germany. A time to relax and to celebrate for all the Invictus Games medalists. And that means there is just one event to go. Coming up, the mixed team open compound final, the gold medal match.
Well, what a welcome for both Romania and the host nation Germany in this final 
gold medal match at the Invictus Games, the final event indeed, before the closing ceremony later on today. A final chance for everybody to get up and to get excited. And it's a different kind of event to the ones that we've just seen, both the novice and the open event in the recurve competition. We now switch to compound archery, a more technically advanced bow. You'll notice the difference as Germany demonstrate their dance moves before they demonstrate their shooting ability. Tom Grunwald and Jens Niemeyer. Kevin Kuitka is also a big part of the team. Romania represented by Corporal Jon Rema, Corporal Marcel Negu and Florin Bolovan. Still on a high after just watching their archers win gold in the Open Recurve competition, defending the title they won in The Hague last year. So you can see the compound bows, slightly different. They've got magnified sights for more precision aiming. The targets they aim at are smaller and further away. The bow has a pulley system with uh, wheels on the top there and cams to help it flow. As a result, the draw weight, the tension when you pull back the string, is not as much in the archer's arm because it's managed by the system of pulleys and wheels. So easier to draw. They'll use a mechanical aid to release the string instead of the fingers. Crucially, though, in terms of how you're following this and the scoring, it is cumulative scoring rather than set point scoring. So the value of each arrow is added up across the sequence of arrows and the total, rather than the total points for winning a set, is what will be used to score. It's not in the Olympic program yet, compound archery. Many would like it to be, certainly those that practice it, but it is featured in a number of multi-sport events around the world. Kevin Kuitka in the wheelchair. The main man for the unconquered wheelchair basketball team made up of German and Dutch competitors that reached the semi-finals. Also got a bronze in his category in the table tennis singles. Jens Niemeyer involved in the sitting volleyball. Tom Grunwald, silver in his individual category, beaten in the end by Pavlo Lushkiv of Ukraine. He beat his teammate Jens Niemeyer by just a one point in the semis. We're all set for the final event 
of the Invictus Games in Dusseldorf. The mixed team open compound gold medal match. Germany to shoot first, Tom Grunwald. Yeah. He's got the 10 as well. Yeah. One of Romania's has uh, been downgraded four now to a nine. As in the Rico competition, they'll have officials to go and, and test it out. Kevin Koitka, a busy week for him across many different sports. You can see the mechanical aid there between the fingers used to release the arrow. And that one is a very good one. Not sure if it is clipping the line or not. Germany 28, Romania 25. And that does look like it has clipped that line, so it's going to be a nine. off here with a nine or a ten. It is another nine. Five nines and a seven for Romania from this first end. Another solid nine from Germany. Two arrows to go. Because of that seven for Romania, they could get themselves a, a decent early lead. And has drifted away from the yellow scoring zone. But it is an eight from Kevin Koitka. An eight or more, and they would have the advantage after the first six arrows. Jens Niemeyer. leads <laughs> 52 to 54 after the first end of arrows and that scoring will continue it doesn't now reset to zero it'll carry on ticking up from the position Checked and verified. We'll see if it does change at all based on the judges' scoring. Jon Roman, a court Paul Asis, uh, Marcel Neagu, who was involved in the competition in The Hague in 2022. 
won gold in the individual events and part of the Romanian team that won silver behind the United States on that occasion. He has a bronze medal in the individual events in this competition, beating Nimai in that individual bronze medal match. USA already have the bronze in the mixed in competition and having beaten Italy went to a fifth set that one suffering across the games with those things that you can't see rather than uh, amputations or potentially life-changing injuries to limbs it's uh, archery that really proves to be one of those sports where they can use the process and the focus to tune out the noise because competing inside the Merkelspiel arena a loud noisy environment with the music and the cheering is an extra challenge for those suffering with post-traumatic stress disorder. Trailing by two to shoot first again. It's in the ninth. It's just drifted a little. Maybe another chance for Germany as it only strikes the seven. In the tender for the third arrow, that'll make up a few more points. Germany and Romania now both with 110. Here is uh, Grunwald, the first arrow for Germany in the second set. And he's got a 10 as well. Second 10 for Germany. Greeted with a huge cheer. Couldn't get a set himself. Into the night. Might filtering out the noise to focus and do it brilliantly. He has nailed a 10, and Germany have extended their lead.
consistent scoring. Romania past the 100 point mark. Germany won't be far behind. Grunbelt, very consistent. Two tens in this end for Tom Grunvall. Oh, I think that might just have caught it as well. Down on the bottom target. It's nine for now. Might get upgraded. Brilliant. Another nine. And the lead is four points. Anything lower than a nine is being punished by Germany. Who have not shot lower than a nine. So those two sevens that Romania have come up with in this end of the first one, which is the difference. Germany also hitting four tens now. It's gone up even more. and there is very little in it between these compound arches. Much more accurate, much more precise. It does tend to be those errant arrows that don't hit the yellow that prove the difference, and there aren't many of them. Again, like their teammates in the recurve competition, many of these guys are really making strides in para archery in their own countries and in para championships across Europe and the world. So, Corporal Ewan Rayman, the 35 year old, to prepare for Romania. Germany's score has been revised up by one. It is now 112 rather than 111. So seven points is the lead. Florin Bolovan for Romania. start the kind of arrow they needed Jon Raymond 
looks like it's on that nine line, doesn't it? And Marcel Nergu with a nine. who'd hit 10 to his previous two arrows. It's another from Kevin Koitka. more central. Jens Niemeyer delivers a 10. Maintaining Germany's seven-point lead. off Romania's next three with another nine. Jan Riemann, another whose vehicle was damaged by an IED. And his lower limbs too. That's another nine. just as they started Romania as they look to claw back some of the seven-point deficit green bolts into the yellow The nine for Kevin Koitka. Germany still have not dropped below that yellow scoring. Another solid nine. One point behind in the end, but still. A six-point lead overall after three ends. and Romania close the gap to be equal with Germany in the next two then they will be involved in a shoot-off doesn't happen as often in compound archery as it does in recurve archery given the set scoring rather than the cumulative scoring but it does happen here each athlete in the team will shoot one arrow and the highest score wins after that, if that's level, then it's a case of which is closest to the center. Then the second closest and the third between each team and so on.
set for end number four. Germany 167, Romania 161. They're hoping Romania for some errant German arrows to close this gap, but they've been rock solid so far. Tens and nines all the way through. Solid start for Romania, Florin Bolovan with a nine. Three nines for Romania. Continuing the consistency from that last end. This man has hit two tens from his arrows so far. Three, actually. I think he started with a ten as well. And there's that clip in the line. Not for now, it's just a nine. Oh, it is a ten. It's been upgraded. He is very, very impressive. Yeah. Ten for Kevin Koika too. And Germany responding, extending that lead further. As long as this one lands in a nine or a ten, that is. quite but they're still up a point on the end first one that has gone below a nine for Germany that one might get pushed up to a ten from Kevin Kutcher as well that one is a ten I think it looks like it's clipped the line Clipping the line. Well, a flourish at the finish for Romania. You have to get this lead down, otherwise, they'll be left with too much to do in the final end. Nine for Grunwald. Let's clip the line two from Kevin Koitka. That is 10 from the first set of arrows revised down just temporarily. They'll check it. But this is the last one of end number four for Jens Niemeyer. Yeah. And he's in the 10. 55 each from this fourth end. And Germany, no, they are within touching distance now. A six-point lead which might move back to seven depending on how that 
Asterisk goes for Kevin Kutka. 222, placed 216. Some excellent crowd conducting going on there as they prepare for this final end in Dusseldorf. The final six arrows of the competition, the final action of the Invictus Games. Here we go. Everybody primed for the conclusion of the Invictus Games. The archery competition and the outcome of the gold medal rests on these next six arrows. It is Germany leading Romania. And that nine was revised up. So it is 2-2-3 plays 2-1-6 at the moment. The gap at 7.1. It is Germany's to lose from this point. Romania and Florin Bolovan to begin this last end in the mixed team open compound archery gold medal match. Begin it in style. Ten for Bolovan, ten for Romania. You could do with all of these coming out as tens, really. Still good, still could be enough. Marcel Nagu with the 10. Michael laid down for Germany. Again, the asterisk, it does look like a 10 from here. Grunwald for Germany with the first of their arrows. It's into the nine. As long as they keep up in the yellow scoring zone, then they're going to be fine. Yeah. Keep doing that, and they'll be more than fine. Ten points for Germany from Kevin Koitka. And everybody supporting the host nation on their feet.
one who's drifted. On the rare occasions it has, it hasn't cost Germany, but Romania might sense a chance here. There are still six points to make up. These need to be perfect. Nine for Bolivar. Last arrow for Jon Rehmann. He's delivered. It's a ten for the corporal. Final Romanian arrow of this archery competition goes to Marcel Nagu. And he, I think, has hit the 10 maybe as well. That'll be checked again. So now it is a 9. And for now, Romania are on 272. Germany can make it academic. Final three arrows for the host nation. Tom Grunwald with the first of them. Nine for Germany. Who are within 12 points. So it's a 10. It's gone up. It looks like it from here. Can't tell the way these scores are being produced. Nine for Koitka. Jens Niemeyer. The final act of the Invictus Games 2023 falls to Jens Niemeyer to draw back his bow and deliver Germany a gold medal. He hasn't faltered yet. And he doesn't now. Germany, the host nation, win the final gold medal of the Invictus Games and bring everybody to their feet. What a moment for the team and for that man, Jens Niemeyer. He must have been feeling those nerves, but he kept it steady. Might even get a 10 with the last arrow. What a beautiful moment indeed. Romania, who scored consistently well and pushed Germany all the way. Pick up the silver. Can you believe it? The revisions won't make too much difference. They'll change the score perhaps, but they won't change the outcome. A moment to savour and remember for everybody involved. Another really consistent, solid display from both of these two. The coaches and the team officials are happy with the end result in terms of the scoring. 278 to 272. Germany sign off in style. A moment he'll never, ever forget. A real party atmosphere in the sunshine on the archery range. A fitting end to what has been an amazing week. Germany the first time hosts of the Invictus Games. Germany the winners of the final gold medal.
Coming up very shortly, the final medal ceremony of the Invictus Games 2. Germany, Romania, and the United States of America.
So here we go. One last time. Let's do this. The mixed team open compound archery competition will shortly be welcoming its medalists. The United States winning bronze, Romania the silver, and Germany capping off a fabulous games with another gold. United States signing off with a medal again in the competition that they won in The Hague. Romania. Just as last year in the Netherlands, Romania pick up silver. This time, that man is the difference. Johan Raymond joining the team along with Bolovan, Florin Bolovan and Marcel Nagu who were present in The Hague. Nagu in the center there, who has a gold medal from those games almost 18 months ago in the individual competition. Again, delivering and again, showing everybody, family, friends, and those he wants to inspire that just look what is possible. Kevin Kuitka, tasting goal two for Germany. Now the man whose final arrow delivered that medal, Jens Niemeyer. The road goes on from here. For everybody involved, it continues day by day. The road from the Invictus Games travels next to Canada and Vancouver. Germany celebrate again. The closing ceremony coming soon. It 
may have lasted a week, but the memories will last a lifetime. And Dusseldorf has been an amazing host to these games. And so the competition ends, and the closing ceremony draws closer. They won't forget it in a hurry either. Magic moments every day, every hour.